All right, ladies, special video for you today. In this video, we're going to talk about how to not suck at life um, and achieve greatness despite hardship. This is a training that we ran for our students in the Win at Love Masterclass, um, Date Your Mate in 90 Days, How to Meet, Date, and Marry a High Quality Christian Man in the Next 12 Weeks. Um, so what we are going over in this video is mindset. So many of you have tried dating and have failed. A lot of you have not gotten past a certain point in your dating journey, whether it's too hard or the men are just lackluster. You haven't really gotten past a certain point and that's become frustrating and you stop and you quit. You sort of hold off for another five months, some of you five years, and then you're back in square one starting over again. If that's you, this video is for you. So let's go ahead and dive into the training, how to not suck at life and achieve greatness despite hardship. And the context is dating. How to not suck at life and achieve greatness despite hardship. All right, this is the uh, Win at Love playbook to dating and life mastery. So I know that, um, you know, my wife has been so awesome in uh, helping you with the skills to date for marriage. Um, and as you're going through the skills training, uh, you have a lot of different tactics. Um, alongside of that, as a compliment, uh, sometimes, you know, you may get bogged down mentally. Um Yep, let me uh add. Okay, so sometimes you might get bogged down mentally. Sometimes you might get a little stressed. Sometimes things get hard and you're like, okay, hold on. How do I navigate through this? Okay, so, and we're today, and, and, and this is sort of how I came to be by the grace of God. Um, it is mindset, it is personal development. It is how we view the world in order to have success, okay? So that's what we're going to be diving into today, just to help you, because you have all the tactics, and we'll keep going over all the tactics, and we'll teach you all the tactics. However, at some point, right, if you don't have the proper outlook, uh, if you don't have what is required from a character or a mindset or a mental, let's say, standpoint, then it won't happen, uh, regardless if you have all of the right stuff. Um, if you don't have the proper orient uh, orientation, then it's just, it's, it's going to be even harder. It's not going to happen for you. So today, this is what we're going to be talking about. Uh, and I'm actually going to be drawing. So some of you may have seen um, some of my drawings in the past. Uh, and this is how we're going to run today's session. I'm just going to be, whoops, I'm going to be drawing here. So let me make this bigger so that we can get started. Okay, so some of you may have seen this. It's sort of like an S-curve before, but I'm going to walk you through a, a, a journey um, that maybe you might be able to resonate with. And this, uh, just to give you some perspective, on how to make it through, all right? So, uh, let's go ahead and draw this journey. Okay, so this is, we'll call this, uh, and this is an S, right? S-T, my uh, handwriting is kind of terrible. Why don't you just add a text? R-T. Okay. okay, so start. This is the starting line, and here is finish. And I'm gonna I'm, let's like finish in quotations, okay? Because you're never truly finished. This is life, um, but this is more like we could think of this like a cycle. But I'm just gonna say finish just for uh, the sake of understanding here. Okay, so this is a journey, okay? And this journey can literally be however you want it to be, or whatever you want it to be about. Um, so right now we're talking about dating. So I'm going to map this into dating. However, this goes beyond dating into every aspect of life. Okay. 
So when we start on a new venture, so, you know, we grow up, we see the world around us, um, you know, maybe you read the Bible, you learned in scripture, you see your parents, you see society, you see celebrities, and you just see people coupled up. And you're like, wow, like, that's amazing. I want that for myself. Like, oh my gosh, I see this couple. They look so cute. They look so nice. Wow, that this marriage looks awesome. It would be nice to have something like that in my life. Okay. And then boom, now we set out on the journey because we want to achieve that same thing. So that is the start. And here, when we start anything in life, we are at, uh, and I'll actually go ahead and use the text, baby. We are at a place where, where we like to call um, uninformed optimism. Yeah, all good. Uninformed optimism. So this is where we start on the journey uh, on of anything. But since we're talking about dating, we'll keep it at dating. So this is when you, maybe you're in a college and you see a guy and like he's handsome and he's cute and you're like, ooh, you might get the butterflies and boom, uninformed optimism. Or, or again, you see the relationships. Maybe you saw some nice relationships and you're like, I want that. I want to go and I want to get that too. Okay, boom, uninformed optimism. This is this is where you start. Maybe in your career, uh, you know, maybe you're a, a doctor and you hear about the journey. You know it's long, you know it's arduous, but you're like, I want to do it anyway, right? So you start out uninformed optimism. Maybe you go out, go after a career. We've all been taught, hey, go to school uh, and get a good job. Okay, when as soon as you start applying for jobs, you you you're so green and you're so excited. That is uninformed optimism, okay? And right after, not too far after you start, you're met with some type of hardship, okay? And this, oh, you're yeah. Just stuck with the title. Yeah, all right. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. So we move along this journey, whoop -de -doop -de -doo, and we move from uninformed optimism to informed pessimism. This is when you're like, whoops. This is when you're like, wow, I had no clue that it was as hard as this. I had no clue the amount of work I had to do to achieve the outcome. Um, and now you do, because you're in it. And you see the huge mountain ahead of you that you have to climb in order to have success in this particular area of your life. Uh, so what that looks like is if you're in school, this looks like studying hard. This looks like reading all the books. This looks like studying long hours so that you can pass the exam and not be mediocre, but actually have an A. Um, at And maybe you're in health and fitness. What this looks like is, um, you know, maybe you've been out of shape and you're like, hey, like, this is my year. Like, I'm going to get in shape. That's the uninformed optimism. And then as soon as you start your first day, you're like, wow, like I forgot how hard this is or wow, this is harder than I, I might have imagined. And boom, informed pessimism, because now you are aware of the hardship that is required, the challenges that you have to go through in order to achieve an outcome. Mm -hmm. OK, now relating this to dating, informed pessimism, usually when it comes to women in dating. OK, this is. You meet a man and he says, I'm not going to move forward unless we have sex. And you're like, oh, my gosh, this is crazy. You're like, who is this man? Like, what is what is going on? And then maybe that's just one man. But then you meet another man and he's talking crazy. He's like, hey, come over to my house. And you're like, Lord, what is happening? And then maybe you even meet a third one and he's just texting you to death and he's he don't really got no motion. And then he ghosts you and you're like, Lord. Have mercy. Can I just can I just have a man who who wants me? Can I just have a man who who um, just appreciates me for me where I don't have to go through this? This is that informed pessimism because you had no clue how men are. You had no clue how men think. You had no clue what men want. You're just going out because you have this idea of dating. You have this idea of marriage. You have this idea of relationships. 
but you don't know how men are. So you're like, whoop de doop de doo boom. And you're just hit with, wow. It could be savage, right? It, 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 you're like hit with the rawness of how men actually are in the world. And you're like, whoa, hold on. What is happening here? And you're thrown for a loop. And what happens in dating, especially for women, especially for the women that are attracted to us, the women that we help, most of you ladies go right at informed optimism and you go right back to uninformed pessimism. So you, I mean, uninformed optimism. So you get here and you stop. Mm -hmm. You don't move forward. You stop. And you take some time off the dating market to heal. Some of you might have gotten into a relationship and the relationship didn't work out. We'll talk about that. But you stop. Okay. And you take some time off to heal. Maybe three years to heal. And then you're like, okay, I'm ready to get back out again. And you're back at uninformed optimism. That's where you are. And then as soon as you talk to another two or three men, boom, you're back at informed pessimism. And you're like, Lord, like, can I just find a good man? Can I just have a man who is aligned with who I want? And it's hard. And you think about giving up and maybe take another couple of breaks and you're like, okay, maybe, maybe it's me. Maybe, maybe I haven't healed yet. Is it something that I'm doing? You start thinking the right way a little bit, kind of, sort of, but then you take a break. And then you go back to uninformed optimism when you're ready again. And you're like, okay, I'm ready again. And then boom. And this is a cycle. So a lot of the women uh, that, that we help, and maybe this has been some of you, this is the cycle that you have been in. You haven't even come all the way over here, which we'll get to this, but you've just been in this cycle. And this is, this is how you stay. And this is how you end up where you are without having a change because you don't change like you get to informed pessimism and you stop and you go right back to uninformed optimism you you never actually go through the hardship that is required so your life never changes and you stay the same now maybe you go through the hardship in other areas of your life so in your career you were taught by society you need to get a job to be successful and and, and then maybe society laid out a roadmap for you you go to grade school for 18 years. When you're 18, you graduate, you go to college for another four years. Maybe you get a master's degree for another two years. Maybe you get two master's degrees and then you get a PhD for another three years. And then you apply for jobs and now you have some income. That was all laid out for you. That was almost expected of you by society. So there was no reason to quit because if you quit then it's like okay well then you can't survive nobody's going to take care of you maybe you got welfare but this is kind of how society has shipped you off so like i guess you know better but in every other area of life that doesn't have this societal structure uh, it's like this indoctrination from a young age if you will it's like no man's land. It's like, how do I make it happen? How do I get there? How do I achieve? How do I get success? So if it's not your career, okay, then it's like, how do I do it? Maybe, maybe you're enthusiastic about something and it's not your passion. So if it's not your career and it's not your passion, then it's like, okay, you're in no man's land and you don't know how to achieve. Okay. And you end up in this circle right here. However, if you are able to sort of continue on for in the journey from uninformed from informed pessimism oh it gets worse okay because we're going down okay it gets worse we are going down okay after informed pessimism this is what we call the valley of despair okay and this is where it's hard you're like lord 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 i i, I i'm struggling i don't know how to do this like I've tried it all. I have no clue how to make it happen. Okay. Some of you have made it here. Maybe you've been in a relationship for three, four years and you just tried everything to make it work. Um, but it didn't. And, and that was no fault of your own. It just did not pan out how you imagined it panning out. Um, but what happens in the Valley of Despair, this is where most people stop right here 
Here's where most people stop is the valley of despair because of the, the hardship is astronomical and you don't see a way out. It's like you're drowning almost, or you're, you're at the base of a mountain and you're trying to climb Mount Everest, but you feel like you don't have no help. You don't know where to go and you're drowning. This is what the valley of despair feels like. Um, and this is where most people in every area of life give up right here in this part. So what this looks like, if you are, um, you set out, you want to start something new. Again, you have uninformed optimism and then you start that something new and then you realize, okay, it actually takes work, but you know what? I'll try it for a little bit. And then you're working and you're working and you're working and nothing that you have done has actually built anything. Nothing has manifested from the work that you've put in. You have no results, but you've been working, you've been working, you've been working, and it seems like to no avail. This is what the Valley of Despair is. All the effort has come back void at this point, or that's what it seems. All your effort has come back void. That's what the Valley of Despair is. That's what it feels like. Is this working? I'm doing everything that they say. I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to. I'm doing everything that I hear, but I'm not having any success. I'm not having any results. What is happening? That's called the Valley of Despair. And an overwhelming majority of people in the population stop here. Maybe they take a break. Maybe they start something new. And they are right back here in underformed optimism on a new opportunity with a new approach, with a new strategy, with a new idea, thinking that the new idea is what you needed. Mm -hmm. Thinking that it's the new tactic or the new strategy that's going to help you. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that is not the case. But that's what you think. If I can just do this one thing differently, that's the thing. Like if, you know, it, it's like the, the the silver bullet. Like if I just do it this way, that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to set it all off. And you go and you try that new thing. And then, boom, you're back at informed pessimism. And then you're back at the valley of despair. And you're like, this is not working either. What's happening? It's not working either. How can I figure this out? And then you look for another shiny object. Maybe you've heard of shiny object syndrome. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you look for the next shiny object and you start that and you go through the same cycle, uninformed optimism, because that's what the shiny object syndrome is. Oh, let me go try this thing. Maybe this will help me. Maybe this will make me get what I need. Uninformed optimism. And then you start it. And the moment that you see you have to do some work, boom, informed pessimism. And the moment that you aren't having the results that you hope for, boom, you're back in the valley of despair. Okay? This is how people live their life. And this is why a lot of people don't achieve a whole lot of what they hope for, a whole lot of what they want, a whole lot of the goals that they have in their life. They don't achieve it because the valley of despair is one of the hardest places. And we aren't taught this in school. We aren't given any practical tools to navigate this in school. We are left to figure this out all on our own. Because the only thing that society has taught us is to uh, be cookie cutter, go to school, work hard, get a job, work hard, and retire. That's it. They haven't taught you any personal development. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or they just give you motivation and they motivation you all to death. You can do it right? You can do it. Yes. It's, you can do it. Amen. Okay. Or like, it's not your fault. Uh, right. They, they deceived you or what, what you be saying, baby. They, they talked about you. They said you wouldn't amount to nothing. Okay. Either way, it's like motivation. It's pep talks, but it's nothing actually, um, that takes place. So they, they don't equip you. And most people drop right here in the Valley of Despair. Mm -hmm. And this seems like forever. The Valley of Despair is this is where things seem like they are taking an extremely long amount of time. Mm -hmm. That's what it seems like. It seems unceasing. 
it's a drag this is where you're like wow like okay how long is it going to take like okay like time becomes an issue here because you are well aware when you're in the valley of despair the distance between where you are and where you want to be has never been more vivid for you it's like right in front of your face every day the gap between where you are and where you want to be is right in the valley of despair it's right in front of you it's almost like you have um it's almost like you you have a glass ceiling if you will it's like there there is a glass in front of you stopping you from getting to the yellow side but you can see it oh maybe you actually can't see it maybe you just like it has to be possible for me because or it, even it has to be possible because other people have done it so it has to be possible other people have done it so it has to be possible maybe that's where you are and it's right in front of you every day mm -hmm. the hardship the the like not the lack the lack of it you feel it all the time you feel it every day every time you go to execute a skill or a tactic or a lesson or a strategy you are reminded how you don't have it like the execution reminds you of it and that's the hard part because you're doing it to achieve an outcome but when you do it you realize you don't have it and this is it's a circle it's a cycle and that cycle is hard however okay what they don't tell you what they don't know okay the good part as long as you remain consistent maybe some of you have heard consistency is key maybe you've heard that in life consistency is key mm -hmm. you just stick it out okay maybe you just give it one more shot okay maybe you heard three feet from gold you stop too soon okay if i just try one more time okay never give up maybe you heard these types of things before okay what happens on the other side once you break through the valley of despair okay what happens we do have another stop and that stop we're not yet at the finish so maybe let me move the finish up a little bit so we don't get confused let's put the finish up here okay and um yep let me go ahead and extend this a little bit Let me extend this finish line to up there, okay? And we're going to change this is now informed optimism. That's what happens after the valley of despair. If I can make this a little visible here. Okay. Right after the valley of despair, you hit informed optimism, okay? This is when you start getting a handle on what you have to do. It's like, okay, like you can have break, you can have what you think of breakthroughs over here. So I don't want to confuse a breakthrough with informed optimism because it's not the same. Because you can you can have something happen for you that move that 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 appears to be ah like i'm happy i got this that appears to be a success but you're still on this on the way down to valley of despair so let's not confuse possible success with informed optimism i don't want i don't want us to get confused with the two okay so informed optimism is when you what this looks like is you understand what you have to do to get the outcome that you hope for and you realize that it's just a matter of time for you to have it okay so you have you have taken hold like you've taken the reins so now you have control and it's and you're like it's just time it's just time it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when mm. it's just time because now you know what you have to do and you know who cares okay it's just time i have to do these things and i have to do them this way and i just have to and all i have to do is just do it and who knows when it will happen who knows how it will come but i know that it will happen that is informed optimism that's what that is that you 
you you don't like the let's say the thing that you want to achieve doesn't have a choice but to happen mm -hmm. like it's the only option is for it to happen mm -hmm. like there is no there is no option for it not to happen i'm not sure if like like what you have set out to do is achievable and you realize oh like it will happen for you you just don't know how it's going to happen but you know it is and you just gonna and you just keep doing the things that you have to do that uh, to make it happen that's it that's what informed optimism is you have a system you have a process you know how to achieve it you know what to do you have a strategy you have a tactic and you just do that because you have control over it and once you have control over it and you've wrapped your hands around it, now truly it's only, it's just, it's just like, okay, I know what I have to do. I just got to do it. Mm -hmm. And all you just do is do it. And at some point after the doing, just depending on what it is that you're trying to achieve, it will happen for you. And you, I'll, I'll change finish. I'll remove finish and I will put, uh, let me delete finish. No. it's all good and I'll put achieve achievement that is the end it's achievement and let me extend this Oops. if my thing wants to draw for me okay there we go achievement that's it achievement is the only option after you break this barrier once you get to informed optimism, achievement is success. It's just the doing of the thing. And it happens for you. You just have to remain steady, remain consistent, keep going. That's it. This is it. Okay. And this right here is how I have achieved anything in my life. And this is by the grace of God. This is how I have achieved whether it's it, actually it doesn't matter who cares what it is this is this is the path this is the cycle okay so relating this to dating okay when you start out dating you're like oh man i would love to have a husband like all these relationships out here i would love that and then you set out on this journey even even for you who are watching this video okay who are watching this training um you joined this course because you had an idea that we can help you achieve okay boom informed optimism okay mm -hmm. oh uninformed optimism you're like hey they got something i think it could help me let me join boom uninformed optimism because you had no clue the depth of what you had to do it's just uninformed optimism okay amen right and we want to help you and then you get access to the course materials and you see all of the trainings that you have to go through, the PDFs that you have to read, the materials, and not only just reading the training and, and watching the PDFs and the materials, but actually taking it and, and going out into the dating market, getting online, swiping left and right, going out in person, talking to men, and actually putting it into practice. And you're like, Lord, have mercy. I had no clue that I had to do all of this work. Boom. And you're like, I'm not sure. Like, like, is it like, is it? Is it mm, it's kind of, no, 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 but you're here. And you're like, Lord, okay, one step at a time, one step at a time, one step at a time. All right. And then you put something into practice. Maybe you get online and, and uh, you got some men talking to you crazy, or uh, you're out in person and you actually experience rejection for real, for real, uh, because you're actually using the tools. So like you're taking accountability for your journey and you're actually putting yourself out there on your own. So it's like whether you win or lose is your fault at this point. And that's the hardest piece is that it's your fault. That's hard. That is hard. Because now you're like, man, like, 
you don't have nobody to blame, but you hope that you're able to blame somebody or you hope that you're able to blame something. Okay. But it's you. And, and the hard part is, is like, it's hard to reckon that you have to do it and that nobody's going to save you. That's the hardest part about the whole thing. And that realization happens right here. Like somewhere, let's say, in between informed optimism and valley of despair, it's like, I have to do this all on my own. And that's terrible. No one's coming to save you. That's terrible. That's hard. Because you have to do it. Okay. And when you are executing, so, uh, and let me erase this. So, yeah, so so some of you, right, you haven't really actioned the material at this point because you're still, maybe you're on week two. Um, so you haven't like had some time to go through the content and like put it into practice, what, what we teach you. But there will be a point where you have to. And, and, and some of you have been in this training for a while and you have to put it into practice and you're realizing that, wow, based on what I say, based on how I interact with men, this outcome happens, this outcome happens, this outcome happens. How do I figure it out? Because it's a lot. It's like everything, everything happens. You do this and then something happens. You thought it was going to be this, but nope, it's this. And then you do this and then nope, it's this. And you're like, oh, God, you're like, Lord. I had no clue it was going to take all of this. It was going to be, it was going to turn me every which way. Because you have to figure it out. All we can do is help you with the tools, but you have to take the hammer, put it on the nail head. You have to take the screwdriver, match it to the screw head. You have to take the scraper and scrape off the thing. You have to match everything up and you have to execute it. And you have to do that every single time, all on your own. Because we can't text the men for you. We can't talk to the men for you. We can't date them for you. We, right, we can't date them for you. We can't be feminine for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can't be in your head, right, saying, okay, I know, I know I can maneuver this man this way. I can't think for you. So you have to do it all on your own. And that's the value of despair because when you start actioning the items and you start actioning the material and you realize that you have to do it all, that can be overwhelming. And what happens when it's overwhelming? Most people go right back to uninformed optimism. And what that would look like is maybe another program might have what I want. No, maybe I was supposed to just wait on God. Oh, <laughs> you know that maybe, right. Maybe I, maybe I went ahead of God. Maybe, um, maybe if I just sit at home, I'll have the information, but you have to, and this is, this is where winners win. You have to take accountability. Mm -hmm. Winners win. That's it. Winners win. And winners don't make excuses for not winning. Mm -hmm. They win. And they learn. And they win. And that's it. Winners win. That's it. That's the only option for winners. They win. So what happens when you win? You move out of the valley of despair and you get to informed optimism. And you're like, okay. I've done everything and I realize what I have to do now. And all you have to do is just do it. And this can happen inside of a relationship or out. But it will happen. Okay. So there are different phases. Some of you, you will interact with a man and everything will be great. And you're going to be right here at the uninformed optimism. Because you haven't seen no signs. You haven't seen no red flags. You're like, man, this man is great. Everything is awesome. Like, wonderful. Like, this could be the one. And he could 
be the one. He could. He very well could. Okay. And then maybe you see a little crack. You see a little sign. You're like, okay. Maybe, okay, like, I'm not really sure about this, but we'll see. Maybe I'll give him some grace. Maybe we got to stick it out. Or maybe he's moving too slow. Who knows? And then the valley of despair. Okay. In the, and, and when you're getting to know someone, what this looks like is, especially as you're going to walk through each of you. Okay. I like him. He's everything that I would want him to be. Why is he taking so long? And you're going to have to wait. And that anxiety is going to be hard. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be like, what is he doing? Like, does he like me? Like, am I going to be passed up on again? Like, don't tell me, like, what I've experienced before is going to come up. Like, is he going to leave me? Like, and you're just hoping. You're clinging on. You're like, he's everything that I hope for. We have a great chemistry, great relationship. Everything is good. It's like we vibing. We're getting along. Like, we're agreeing. I'm still feeling him out a little bit, but like, he could be the one. Maybe this is like month two. And you're just like, he hasn't asked you to be his woman yet. Maybe he hasn't asked for commitment yet. But everything is lining up. Everything is a match. Chemistry is there. But it seems like, like what? Like, does dude have all day? What's going on, really? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's what this feels like. Or maybe you hop into a relationship quickly. And he takes six months to propose. Mm -hmm. And during that six months, maybe you're in a relationship. So you have pseudo commitment at that point, as my wife would say. But you've been in this relationship for four months. And you're like, all right, like, are we going to do this? Or what's really happening? Like, what are we doing here? Okay, you start getting antsy, you start getting anxious. And it's like, okay, I have to leave. That's, that's how you're going to feel. I have to leave. Okay. The issue is you're going to have to experience, you're going to have to go through that with whoever it is that you're dating. You're going to have to have that. You're going to go, you're going to have to go through that uncertainty, that uncertain phase that is he taking so long or what, whatever's happening. You're going to have to go through the valley with whoever it is, where that valley is in your relationship. Who knows? It could be in the beginning. It could be in the middle. It could be right before like marriage. And Lord, we don't want to have valleys in marriage. So hopefully it happens prior to marriage. Right, because we don't want to end up in a situation where we're married and then boom, now stuff hits the fan and it's like, Lord, I probably shouldn't have married this man. We don't want that. We prefer to happen prior to marriage. Okay. <laughs> that's that's the idea. We want all of that stuff to come out prior to. And when all of that stuff is coming out and you're seeing his humanity and you're having to rely on him, that that's the valley of despair. And how long you wait, how long you stick it out, how long you do things. I mean, we're here to help you sort of make judgment calls and we give you the tools and, and we equip you to make those judgment, judgment calls. But you will have to, at some point, you'll have to call it or you have to call whether you wait or you stay. You'll have to call it. And it's going to be a man who, who you're aligned with. And maybe he's just taking too long or maybe you're uncertain. Maybe you're starting to get anxiety. Boom. And this is like inside of a commitment. This is what that looks like valley of despair but just like with everything else ladies you make it through it mm -hmm. now you're going to have to judge is this a man who i want to be with however as with everything else you do make it through yep. yes, you do. and then things start getting more secure you start having more um serious like maybe financial commitments you start like setting dates you start like Real money start getting involved. Plans start getting set up. And you're like, oh, like, okay. It's happening. And then, praise the Lord, you have a husband. We went through that too. Yeah. <laughs> so this, this is the cycle, you know. 
you might say cycle of life, if you will. But this is a journey. And this journey is evident everywhere. Everything that you do, especially things that you have no clue how to go about doing it, you have to go through this cycle. Is 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 one of those things that there is no there, there is no other way. So highlighting it for you, just so that you have perspective as you're going about dating, the work that you're putting in when you are texting 10 men and nobody's responding, or you are uh, bantering with men and it seems like nobody's interested in you, or if you're going out on you know five dates and nobody seems to connect with you. This is when that comes up. Because what happens if you stop? You stop. That's what happens. You don't have what you hope for when you stop. So now, sometimes you might need to <laughs> relax a little bit. I'm not saying be on 100 all day, every day. Sometimes you might need to recalibrate. Okay, but how long you recalibrate, we don't have to spend forever recalibrating. Okay, we just have to decompress for a little bit. And it's like, all right, let's get back at it. But this is how you not suck at life. <laughs> when you're faced or in despite of hardship. This is how. This is how you not suck despite hardship. All right, ladies, hope that video was helpful for you. If you would like more information on how you can join our program and join our training and get that personalized help uh, to help you go from where you are, which is single as a Black Christian woman, all the way to married, then my wife and I would love to have a conversation with you and help you on your journey. So go ahead and click the link below uh, to schedule a call with us, with me, uh, and we will see if what we have to offer may work for you. If not, that's fine. Uh, continue watching our videos. We are here to serve and support your journey to kingdom marriage.